Welcome everyone to The Simple Word. I'm your host, Emmanuel Mutui. Today we'll be talking about a prosperous soul. Before we jump into today's episode, I want to kind of do a little recap of the previous episode so the people who didn't watch it can have an understanding of what's going on. This is a series that we started last time called We're Not Alone. And in this series, we're talking about God's promise to never leave us nor forsake us. And one of the reasons why, actually the reason why God promises that promise is because He loves us. Simple as that. It's not very complicated. God loves us, so He will never leave us. And one of the things that we talked about last time that prevents us from experiencing His love or receiving His love is the fact that we are shameful, we are fearful, and worst of all, we think we have to be perfect, which produces all these other things. And the cure, I want to read this point from the last time. The cure to this is understanding we are not perfect and God does not require us to be perfect. He wants us to come to Him the way we are and rest in His perfection. And we're not talking about rest. I've done a whole series about rest, so please go check it out if you're interested in hearing that. So, in this episode, like I've mentioned, we'll be talking about a prosperous soul. Go with me to 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. The soul is a very interesting part. See, man is made up of three sections or parts. We are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in this physical body. This, well, the purpose of this body is to give me contact in this physical world. But we are a spirit. We don't have a spirit. We are a spirit. But, or well, and, we have a soul. And the purpose of the soul is to kind of filter all the information co that comes through the physical world, all the spiritual world, and gives us that information. And then we decide. And the soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. For us to have a prosperous soul, we must be thinking right. Our wills must be submitted to God. And we, have, we must have our healthy emotions. If all of those are in check, then our souls will be prosperous. If they are not in check, and you can't have one out of three or two out of three, all three have to be in check or healthy. For you to have a prosperous soul. We can be, see here's the thing about having an unhealthy soul. Because humankind were created for relationships. And when your soul is healthy, then you can have a proper relationship with people. But if your soul is unhealthy, you'll isolate yourself from people. Because you're wounded. And when you're wounded, you retreat. So now the question is this, how can we have a prosperous or healthy soul? So let us break down the soul, like, like I've talked about, the soul is made up of the mind, will, and emotion. So let's talk about each individually. Let's start off with the mind. And I want us to go to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Our minds are very, very powerful. They're very, very powerful. I want to read these two fun facts I saw about the mind. The first one is, information travels to and from the brain at 250 miles per hour. With billions of neurons at work, information can travel into and out of the brain at incredible speeds, moving at 250 miles per hour in from Per hour. Information is moving faster than any race car driver. Formula One races have peaked at 240 miles per hour. That's how fast your brain is. The human brain can generate 23 watts of power, enough to power a light bulb. Isn't that interesting? All that power calls for much needed rest. Adequate sleep helps maintain the pathway, pathways in your brain. And what that point is saying is, that's why you need to rest, so that your brain can rest and be able to generate all the power. That's a lot of power. 
those two points I've just made, I've just given them for fun facts so that you can know how powerful your brain is. But I want you to write this down if you write notes. Perception is reality. Perception is reality. Whatever perception we have, that is how we'll build our lives. That's why God wants us to renew our minds so that we can have His perception of life. Listen to this verse in Proverbs 23, 7. For as He thinks in His heart, so is He. You are what you think. If you don't renew your mind, you'll be trapped to your reality. If you think godly, you'll behave godly. If you think fleshly, you'll behave fleshly. If you think you're not good enough, you'll behave unworthily. You have to renew your mind. All right, let's move on to the next part of the soul, the will. See, the will is a decision maker. Through our will, we decide what we want to do or not do. The will is what, is what dictates our life. Our will will either lead us to God or away from God. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5 from verse 6 to 7. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. So if the charge of the mind is to re be renewed, the charge for our will is to be submitted. We must choose to submit ourselves to God. We all know people who have tried to live life without God. And for the most part, it doesn't work out well. Even believers who have chosen to live life for themselves because they're not, they're not willing to submit to God. They're not willing to put themselves on the altar and let God control them. Let God lead them. Let God be king of their lives and lord of their lives. See, that has been me most of my life. I did not want to submit to God. But then after you go a couple rounds with God, you realize it's, it's a lot easier if He does that because He's God. And you know, we all, do you know that phrase, let me be me, that people use it all the time? God one time told me, let me be God. And I was like, what are you trying to say? He said, let me be God. Because I try to be God. And he got frustrated. And then I get frustrated. But when we, I let him be God and let me be the creation, our relationship has never been better. Look at this verse in Genesis chapter 32, verse 25. This is Jacob wrestling with God. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Jacob had a very strong will. Jacob stole his brother's inheritance, ran away, goes to his uncle, marries Leah and Rachel, God blesses him, and he lives with a lot of cattle and servants and comes back and before he meets Esau he has this moment with God demanding to be blessed wow before I even continue that's a lot of our lives we fight for everything that we have we fight we fight and we fight because maybe that's the childhood we grew up, we had to fight for everything. But we fight nonetheless. But there has to come a time like Jacob, where you must surrender. And when he was wrestling with the angel over there, the angel touched the hip of his socket and made him have to surrender. Because obviously the angel could have taken him out. It's not, this is not a question of Jacob was as strong as the angel. The angel wrestled with him until he was at the end of his rope. And then when he was at the end, 
he touched his socket so that he will always be dependent on him. And for the rest of his life, Jacob walked with the walker or whatever they used at the time. He was solely dependent on that walker. And that's how God will sometimes do to us. He will let us fight, 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 fight. And when we are out of strength, break us. So that now you have to depend on Him. So that you do not think that you're your own God. So that you will let Him be God. Amen? Ah, let's move on to emotions. This is a tough one for me, to be honest, because... The way we grew up in Kenya, and I'm, since I've been in the U.S., I've realized a lot of males are like this. Emotions is, we've been taught, is not a manly thing. Emotions is for women, for kids, but not for men. It, it got worse in Kenya where we would get hit in school, and if you cried, you're not a man. So you had to hold it in as much, doesn't matter how much you hurt, because you got to be a man. And when I started growing with the Lord and walking with the Lord, he began to challenge all these ideas that I had about manhood, specifically in regards with emotions. And I began to understand that emotions are God-given. Emotions are necessary for us to live a healthy life. And actually, emotions are the drivers of the soul. As much as we like to accept it or not, emotions drive us to do things. When we're angry, what do we do? Some run, some get quiet, some hit other people, but that's driven by emotions. And these are men I'm talking about who are not supposed to be emotional. You see, there's two ends of the spectrum when it comes to emotions. We have people who, people who are in tune with the emotions that, to the point where the, the emotions drive them to, if they wake up and they feel bad, then they're going to have a bad day. If they wake up and they feel good, then they're going to have a great day. The emotions determine how they react. And then the other end of the spectrum is people who don't even acknowledge their emotions. They shove them so deep down that they become robots. And both of them are bad because you're still driven by emotions. Like this person will be stoic trying to avoid his emotions. So his emotions are driving him to be stoic. This person over here obviously is very much driven with emotions. But we want to be in the middle. Look at this verse in Proverbs 29 verse 11. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. And the point of that verse is control. Are you controlling your emotions? To not be too extreme over here or not to the other extreme over here. Learning how to control your emotions is very, very important. There are, thing, there are times when we need to let our emotions out and cry and vent. But there are also times where we need to be still and process. It's finding that balance of when to express them or hold them back. And that's the hard part. Look at this verse uh, in Proverbs 25, 20, 28. A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. The thing about our emotions is that we cannot cheat the process. If let's say you have a death or some tragic happens, you, you have to healthily grieve, you have to cry, you have to go through that pro healthy process of channeling your emotions. Because if you shut it down, it's going to come out later. And it might be an explosion, it might be something even worse. Because you cannot, see emotions, you can never tame, you can never tame your emotions. Your emotions are real and they're there. And it's based on you and how to cultivate them so that they're healthy. So that when it's time to cry, you cry and then you move on. When it's time to be quiet, you be quiet and then you move on. The danger of putting off our emotions is it will begin to leak into other areas of our lives. Emotions are very dangerous if they're left unattended. And when you have your mind renewed, your will submitted, your emotions healthy, you will be a very healthy person and you'll be bringing life to everybody you come in contact to. And more important, when something happens, you'll be able to recover quicker because you're healthy. 
And even more important than that, you'll be able to love others because you're able to receive God's love for you. When you learn how to balance all this, you'll be very prosperous in your livelihood. Because the worst thing to have is an unhealthy person. Because it will bring everybody else down. I pray that this message the Lord will take and will help you learn how to navigate your emotions, learn how to navigate your will and your mind, and in the end you'll be a very, very prosperous person. And I just thank you for listening. Thank you for being attentive to everything that I'm saying. And I just pray that you'll have a wonderful day or night. Have a good day. Goodbye.